the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, my special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of New York City. Her name is Ajakuma. Miss Ajakuma, how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you so much for bringing me on today. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And the pleasure is all mine. Trust me. And uh, you have a new single out, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, called He, which I love, by the way. Thank you. Um, but before we get into that, tell us a little bit more about your background. Yes. So I'm a Ghanaian American. Um, both of my parents came um, to the States in like the early mid-90s and built their life here. I have four siblings. None of them in music. I'm the only person in my family, extended family that I know of, that's pursuing music. And um, a lot of my, a lot of my background is, comes from again being Ghanaian, being brought up in New York. Um, I actually live a little bit outside of uh, the city in Rockland, so being brought up in more of like the suburbs suburbs area but going to church in the city going to church in the bronx um all ghanian church hearing the music in the church has has a very like african ghanian gospel feel to it um and then coming back to the suburbs going to school with a very mixed crowd you know a lot of white people haitians and, you know dominicans um yeah and i think discovering my musical talent really started um, in elementary school where I didn't know if I could sing or not, but I knew that when I was singing, it always felt good. So I'll be singing anything and everything, TV jingles, commercials, um, uh, and just in front of the TV, not really for like modern like that, singing along to Disney Channel tunes, you know, theme songs, just the whole bit. And going throughout my time in elementary school, I wanted to try playing the violin. I did that for a few years. And I figured I don't want to do the violin. I want to sing. So, as time, a lot of my journey is re really consists of like figuring out what I wanted to do, and and trial and error. You know, I picked up the violin, didn't want to do it. I went to voice. Um, and once I really got into middle school, I realized like I realized like I was a decent writer because people kept telling me like, oh, you know, like you have. Like the way you write, it's it's good. So I would just write in my notebook, in my science books, in my math books, you know, in my textbooks. It's just writing like thoughts, feelings, like ideas, not knowing what's going to come up with it, but just doing it. And in high school is where high school is really where I just full fledged like took any opportunities I could, um, participating in mixed vocal groups, advanced vocal groups, women's voice groups always trying to participate in solos, um, coffee houses, showcases at my school. Um, because coming from my family, like, you know, all they know is education. All they know is education and going to school um, and making something of yourself that way. So I had to kind of take it upon myself to really figure out, you know, how am I going to make this happen? How am I going to foster, you know, these gifts? And when I went on to college, um, I always say I had I had like a Mariah Carey moment because most people who know Mariah Carey's story know that she didn't go to college. She ended up, you know, getting an apartment with her friends in New York City and started building up her dream that way. And I told my mom, like, I'm, I'm not going to go to college because Mariah Carey didn't and it worked out for her. <laughs> and she looked at me like, she was like, school education is not a non-negotiable. Figure out what you're doing and, and start applying. So ended up majoring in communications, um, which I'm so thankful for to this day because a lot of the skills that I realized I need to maneuver throughout the music industry 
I learned going to school, figuring out how to get things done on campus, figuring out how to make things happen, um, learning, um, fostering in on my writing skills, and just really, you know, just really kind of build myself up. So I'm so glad I actually ended up going to school, and I used a lot of that time to kind of, kind of work on like my side hustle, you know, which is my music. And again, look, I used to like go search for beats on the internet and just write to them. Like even if I never recorded them, just writing, writing, writing. Because I knew like once I had a chance, like once I had like a decent amount of money, I could go record. So yeah, a lot of my journey is just kind of like figuring out on the way, trial and error, just trying to figure out how to make you know, things happen. Okay. Now, getting back to your um, your childhood, was music a big part of your household? I think so. I definitely think so. Um, and I don't think it's something like my parents or like my siblings realized, you know, just in general, like if it was Sunday, if we're on our way to church, my mom's playing like, you know, the, the Ghanaian oldies, like the, the old classics of her generations. And they're also playing like the old like gospel music and like I just be listening to it just like okay like it has a funky beat like this is cool um and again like I always say I used to sing to Disney Channel songs because you know as kids you're watching TV whatever um I would have a remote singing like to everything like I would know all like the like kids tunes and just be blasting it out doing the full-on choreography because that like p pretending like I was on stage with someone but it was really me and myself in front of the TV. And I think when like, when I really wanted to become more serious, I would say like in early high school, I totally accidentally stumbled upon, um, there's this collection of like, like 90 CDs that my dad had. I don't know the last time he ever touched them or listened to them. And I just saw like, oh, I saw like Mariah, Mariah Carey's like first CD, her debut album. Um, I think it was called Vision of Love. And then I saw like Boys to Men, like one of their first CDs. I think it was Fully High Harmony. Um, and I just saw a bunch of like Whitney Houston CDs. And I was like, like obviously I know who these people are already, but like to see like the full CD, like with the full songs, like I would, and this was like relatively early, like, or this is not like back in the 90s, like I found this 2013. So I would put it in a radio. Yes, I still had a radio at that time. <laughs> I put I would put the CDs in like our little radio thing and I would just listen to it. And I'd be like, wow, like that was Mariah Carey. Like that was Whitney Houston. That was what's meant. So I feel like I feel like unlike most people, like I wasn't like bombarded with like again, like musical family or like musical parents. But there was like all of these like little hints. Like they were just it was just there. And I, I think as a young person, I kind of just took it upon myself to like dive into it, you know, full throttle. Um, and yeah, I think that's really, that's really where it came from. More so kind of on accident, you know, without my awareness. Okay. And so uh, getting back to high school, you said this is where you kind of, you kind of decided this is what you want to do. Um, what was the, um, um, well, let me ask you, this is your, is this your, your first uh, song that you released, He, or? No, I actually released a song last year called Left My Mark On You. And it was like the first, it wasn't the first song I written or recorded, but it was just one I felt like, you know, it's kind of going into the direction I want, but not really, but like, let's see how it goes. So like, I just released it. And you know, like, my friends hit me up like, oh wow, Natalie, like this is really, or Ajakuma, Natalie's my first name. Ajakuma is my middle name. Um, they were like, oh, like Natalie, like this is, this is really good. And I was like, thanks, you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to start getting things out because for so long, I was just writing for myself and like kind of just recording and not putting anything out there. And I think at a certain time I was like, girl, you just need to let it go. Like let it go and just keep going from there. So he's actually like my second song that's out there. But but I think it's going more in the direction I'm trying to create for myself sonically and visually. Okay. Now, um, he is a great song, like I said. I love it. And we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna play it a little bit later. But explain um what your um because you also you you named the 
a lot of people that you listen to and sort of maybe inspired you a little bit. What is your writing style? How do you, how do you, how did you come across or how did you um, take on he? Mm -hmm. um, in general, I think my writing's definitely story like. I think, and it's de definitely um, theme driven. So like, I really try my best to like think of a topic and build a world around that topic. Build a beginning, middle, and end. Build like a visual representation so when people hear it, they see the story happening in front of them. Um, and with he, he, I wrote that in like 2018, like the year I was graduating from college. I'm like a year and a half or two years, almost two years out of school. I wrote that 2018 and I had the melodies for it and I knew how I wanted it to sound, but like, just like any creative, sometimes you're stuck on certain portions and for months, I would say like five months, I, I didn't know, I could not figure out what I wanted to talk about in the song. So, you know, I went on to other songs and I was writing on other things and doing whatever else. And I was, and I would always come back to this, like, I don't know what I want to talk about here. And one night I was watching one of Tyler Perry's movies, actually, I think it was Temptation. And basically, if you've seen the movie, the main character, you know, marries her childhood sweetheart and then she ends up having an affair with someone else. And I remember just thinking like, I'm like, why would she do that? Like she had she had a great guy, a husband who loved her and wanted to be there for her. But like he ended up not having, I guess, he wasn't there. He wasn't there like spiritually, emotionally, really. You know, he kind of became distant and like the connection wasn't there, I guess. And in the movie, again, she has an affair. And I, and I just remember thinking like time, like time, the currency like you didn't spend, someone else, you know, spent that. And that's the line I put in the hook. So after I watched the movie, I was like, I was like, okay, I got it, I got it. So, so I kind of like based the story on that movie, and I, and I kind of like was thinking about the movie again, thinking about the lyrics, and thinking about the main character. How would she feel? How would how would I feel if someone did that to me? How would they feel if someone did that to them? You know, I just started to think about all of these feelings, and from there on, I was just able to write the full thing. So it's definitely. Like, definitely story like and I also think conversational as well like because I feel like if people you know listen to the lyrics it's almost like it is like I am talking to that person I am talking to like my husband I am talking to my partner letting them know this is why I did what I did so yeah I, I think I come at it from those, those two things. oh wow yeah so you sound like you're more of a you know a visual writer where you can take an idea and just just write about it. Cause I was going to ask you, uh, was it, um, did it come from a personal, uh, relationship that you had, but you said that you was inspired by a Tyler Perry movie, which is, yeah. is great. Okay. Yeah. So looking or listening to he, I can definitely hear the R and B portion, but I also hear, uh, I think you described it as, um, uh, was it Afro like, Soul or Afro? I always say Afro Fusion or Afro, Afro Inspired because I think because of the way I sing, you know, the way that God has given my voice, it's it always comes off like R and B or like more soulful. But I think the music, the production, like the sound, um, I go for or I gravitate towards always has like you know, that two, three, like Afro beat kind of, um, that sound that like, once you hear it, you can, you can, you can groove a little, you know, you can do a little two step, you know, you can, you <laughs> feel it. And I think that's something, something that was really important in this song. And, and it's something I know I'm going to carry for every single song. You know what, even if it's not through the production, whether it's like, again, the stories, the lyrics, like there's always going to be that part of my music that's that's inspired by me being done and in this case it would be more of this more of the again the afro uh, fusion portion and the next song i might be speaking a little bit i try, try speaking more um tree in it or maybe i might you know tell a story about when i was in ghana and what i saw at one of the clubs you know it's it's those elements that i always try to pull from to really create this world because i think um, from my perspective, I think 
something that's so necessary for again like first generation people like me or like people who might have just come here from like Senegal or Nigeria who, who came here when they were maybe like five or grew up in like the city or grew up in a different part of the um, state. It's that it's that I guess that middle ground, you know, that middle ground of people telling those stories of what it's like to to grow up as like a first generation, like what our parents are like, the stories they used to tell us, like how that affects our college, how that affects our future. You know, it's very different than a lot of stories out there. So I think that's something I want to be, you know, a progenitor of, you know, telling those specific stories that are good and not told. Well, it definitely works. Um, and uh, like I said, I love it. And I don't want to, you know, delay playing it any longer. So we're going to um, play He. And this is Ajakuma on He on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Enjoy. You said I've been acting different You claimed I've been hiding something So, so, so sorry But it is true, it's true, it's true I hate that it came to this You're gonna hate me for this I'm gonna find another man I'm sexy man Who provided everything you could Yes, all them diamonds Yes, all them rings And the clothes in my closet You should have been there when I needed you most Now I'm so gone He was everything that I wish you could be He put all his effort in me He was the water when I needed quenching time The currency you never spend He spent that all on me And that's what means the most to me So now I got to leave with you So now we can figure this out You're throwing all of you so dumb Oh, too, 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 too little Too late, too late, too late I begged for your time and effort Now I'm off to bigger and better Just some money in my veins Every Friday Getting me some lingerie Red with the lace He's satisfied me when yes. you ignore my needs yes. I'm not ashamed to say He got me credit for my car for my life, and one other time. you took me for granted. What? I don't understand what? it. Now I'm so gone, baby. Why boy. would you do that to me? With everything that I wish you could be, he put all his effort in me. He was the water when I needed quenching time. The currency you never spend, he spent that all on me. And that's what means the most to me. So now I got to leave.
continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. All right, Ajal Kuma, we're back. Great song. I love it. Like I said, I'm sure everyone's going to love it as well. It's yeah. different, and you definitely can hear the the uh, the African influence um, in your music. So speaking of that, um, I've never been to Ghana, um, but um, tell us a little bit more about, uh, about Ghana. You said your parents... Um, migrated from there um so yeah. tell us a little bit about that who those who don't know anything about, about ghana yeah i think definitely with the year of return being uh, in 2019 just last year a lot of people are getting more familiarity with it and like they're learning more about it and like are willing to explore the country which i think is awesome um so i think in the area i'm from it's very it's a very quiet place you know there's Accra, which is like, it's like New York City. It pretty much is like New York City. It's busy, it's traffic, it's nuts. Um, but I think what makes it, what gives it its energy are like the sellers. You know, you see people, you know, with you know, water, candy, food, like just so many different like Ghanaian foods. There's a food called Kenke. There's like sardines, like all these people just having it on from car to car, just selling. Um, walking through the traffic, you know. Imagine that, just imagine New York City like that, where you have people selling like newspapers or trying to sell coffee, like just walking through the traffic, you know, hundreds of people. So that's something that I feel like is, you know, really unique and cool about Ghana. And I think it's, it's such a developing country. It's such a developing country. And like, I know a lot of people like myself or people who are even, not even Ghanaian, but like maybe they're Nigerian or, um, from Mali or, you know, different areas of Africa, but like this idea of like developing, you know, there's so much, I think there's so much opportunity right now to kind of like go there and develop its infrastructure because it's doing pretty well. Um, when I was just there with my parents in September, we went to, we went to Kumasi, which was, which is, um, I guess, I think it's like the second uh, biggest area in Ghana. And my dad was saying like, this is not how it was like when I was a kid, you know, when I was younger. So much has changed, so much has developed, you know. They built all these buildings, like they used to just be like, they say bush, like it was just, you know, nothing, just leaves, just, you know, it's just nothing. Now there's all this development happening, so it's really cool. And I think December is the hottest time to go. Um, I think you'll probably see on Instagram, like, there's so many, like, YouTube videos of, you know, people going in December because there's so much, there's so many concerts happening, so many artists, um, and there's so many, musically speaking, there's so much talent coming out of there. Like, I know there's, an, there's so many already, there's, like, a rapper called Stucco like, he's the pop, most popular, one of the most popular um, rappers out there. Dance Hall is huge in Ghana, like, not many people um, know that. And like in high school, when I first started like listening to more Afrobeat, I didn't know dance hall was that popular. Of course, when you think of dance hall, you think of Jamaica, um, but the dance hall scene there is nuts. Um, and you have artists like Ch Chatawale and Stone Boy doing it real big, and like, traveling to the UK and the US, and like getting the the Ghana name out there. So I think. I think really Ghana is like, it's a great place for people to visit and have fun, um, but it's also a great place for people to like, learn more about, learn and invest and like, kind of develop it into the Ghana level. Okay. And um, I know with, you know, everything going on with the uh, coronavirus and the travel ban, uh, it might be kind of tough to get back and forth. Um, is the goal at some point is to go back and perform, or have you performed in uh, in Ghana before? No, not yet. That was, that was definitely a goal for this year. I do in December to try to pull some gigs over there. And even my original plan was uh, this June to go over there to like really hunker down and start working on this project. But I think Ghana has even closed its borders right now, so I don't think that's happening. But I'm kind of like 
I'm keeping my eye on it to see whether that changes or not. So yeah, traveling's going to be a little bit difficult. Yeah, and uh, but you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it is what it is. But hopefully, it won't last. Jeez, I hope it doesn't last. You know, maybe more than a few months. Hopefully, um, yeah. Now, I want to get back. I want to touch on something else. Um, earlier, you said that um, you were, you know, going online and you know, looking for beats um, to kind of write to. Um, are you a um, independent artist or are you signed to a label or how does that work? Yeah, definitely independent. Um, I think it's teaching me so much and I think as artists as a whole, being just a singer and just a songwriter or just a guitarist or just a pianist, like just being an entertainer, it's good but it's not enough. I think I think it's important for all of us to have skills outside of that, um, which is why I said before, I'm so happy I actually ended up going to, to college and major in communications because I've been able to utilize, utilize those skills you know, for my career. Um, so right now, I'm like doing everything. I'm like getting up blogs myself, you know, writing my own songs, like cur- curating who I want to get them to be, curating my project, figuring out, okay, I'm at point A, where do I want to be in the next like, six months? And me, myself, drafting up a plan and saying, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Like, I have so many documents, and spreadsheets, you know, lists of, you know, of my plan, of my own strategic planning, telling myself, okay, so to achieve X, you have to do A, B, C, and D. This is how you're going to do A, B, C, and D. Um, and yeah, so right now I'm taking the time to like, to develop myself artistically, you know, art development, doing what we do to be the best as I can, but also developing all the skills so I can. So in the event I have someone on my team who can't be there anymore, I know how to keep the train moving by myself. Wow, I mean, uh, you are a um, very impressive young lady, I must say. Um, Thank you. You seem very organized and you seem very, um, you know what you want, uh, which is yeah. which is great. Um, now, getting back to uh, uh, your music, um, did you do all the writing and all the music for he or did you work with producers or other artists yeah so lyrically i wrote the whole song um for the track i worked with the producer his name is yang he beats um he's on my you can definitely find him um but yeah usually when it comes to like again melodies and content and lyrics that's always me at producer wise i kind of just like scour the internet figure out who i like hit them up and like kind of go from there um but i think with this baby project it was really gonna it's really gonna be my chance to like to create that sound from scratch create that sound create, create those themes and ideas from scratch um even i was i didn't mention this before but um, I went to Ghana in September, and I went back in December as well. And when I was there, um, I was working on a beat from scratch with a producer over there. Um, he created, he pretty much created the, um, the framework. And I was just kind of there thinking, okay, I think this sounds good. I think this is what I'm going for here, you know? And like, I'm, I wouldn't put claim to be a producer or anything, but I think, if I feel like I hear something that needs to be there, like I'm comfortable enough to like go to the piano and be like, okay, I think what I'm hearing sounds like this. Um, and I think that's what I'm really excited more than anything for this project, to really to go more on that production side. Because I think with the sound I hear in my head, um, it's something very different that I feel like both like, you know, the, the Afro beats audience, I guess, and the more R&B audience, like, they haven't heard before. Uh, so I'm just excited to kind of delve into that on the production side. Okay. Now, let me ask you, um, uh, like I said, I, I love the song. What do you hope people um, get out of your music? What do you hope uh, to um, to relate to those who are listening to uh, not just he, but I'm sure everything else that's coming down the line? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great question. And I think it's really just to think 
I think just to think and to use your brain. Um, to kind of, because I feel like a lot of the content that I have that I haven't been released, like, it just goes through the human experience and it goes through like the human connection and like, how we deal with each other and how we deal with life, you know? He is not necessarily, I don't promote, you know, you cheating on your partner. I don't promote, you know, lying and infidelity, of course not, but these are realities that people are facing. These are realities that are happening in our world. So I think I really want people to just like listen to the music, hear the stories, and think like, that was an interesting story. Like, what does this mean for my life? What does this mean for like my family? How does this relate to me? And take from it what they will. My favorite, my favorite artist, one of my favorite of artists, artists of all time is Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. And the reason I love Lauren Hill so much is because when I listen to Miseducation, when I listen to Miss Education, she goes through the whole, like, it's not just about one thing. It's not just about love. It's not just about, like, a boyfriend. It's it's about everything. Like, it's just, it goes through the complete, like, human experience. Like, how we deal with each other, money, you know, what we think, how we as women think, what we as women deserve, how we're supposed to be treated, you know, spirituality, loving God. And I think she really is up there for me in terms of what I want my music to do for people because that's what she did for me. She made, and people like her and like India Ari um, just really made me realize that like, I want my music, I want my music to be a, a complete package where you're not just hearing about one thing all the time. You're gonna have club bangers, of course, because that's part of the human experience. You're gonna have songs about love because that's part of the experience, but like, there's so much more to get. So I just want people to really, really be thinking. Well, yeah, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is one of my favorite albums of all time. Favorite. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I love that album. Uh, now, um, sort of another question related to that. Um, they inspired you. Um, what, what, kind, what kind of advice would you give, uh, not just, um, you know, a, uh, a female artist, but any any artist in general, what kind of what kind of what kind of message would you tell them or inspiration on uh, uh, mm -hmm. words of wisdom? Let me just put it that way. What kind of words of wisdom would you have for people who are maybe thinking about going down the same path that um, that you went down? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably the same advice I tell myself every day because I'm still so new. Um, I think it's. Of course, like trust yourself, believe in yourself, know what you want, know what you want. And this doesn't even just go for artists because because I went to school, like I always try to like reach back out to students, connect with them. You know, sometimes I'll have like a student from my college, you know, who used to be my major hit me up and like just ask for like small advice. Um, is know what you want. Just because you're majoring in X doesn't mean you're guaranteed the outcome you think you're gonna get. It's like, figure out what you want and make make your success happen. Like, architect your own success, you know? If you see your end goal, create that. Create ways for you to get there. Um, and I would just really say, like, again, outside of your, outside of your core skills, and this goes for artists, but like, anyone in whatever field, outside of your core skills that you have, figure out how to develop other skills that can support your core skill. You know, I don't, I feel like I don't hear people like give that advice a lot, but I think it's so important because you can, you can go far with what you have, but you can go farther when you have knowledge in different areas, areas you don't even think of later, you know? So I would just say that diversify your skill set, trust in yourself, believe in yourself. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and network, network. And this definitely goes out to my college kids. Network, network, network. Meet people, talk to people, ask questions. If there's someone um, out there that's in the position you want to be in, see how they got there, you know? And just do that. Wow. Um, 
Fantastic advice. That was an excellent answer. Um, let me ask you, um, what college did you go to? Because um, they need to be teaching this. I mean, what? <laughs> Uh, hey. Shout out to my, to my college students out there. I know right now with the coronavirus, like it's really messing up like your graduation plans, and I'm so sorry about that. Um, I went to SUNY New Paltz, so that was a state school, or that's a state school that's about like it's like an hour and a half from the city. So like you see a lot, of, a lot of people from the city go there. But from the area I'm from, Rockland County, um, they end up going there. Um, it's a really cool school, very liberal, artsy. Um, and I and I just really feel like, again, college isn't your only path to success, not at all. But I think it's important for students to get in the books, but learn outside of the books, you know? Um, and yes, shout out to my college students. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. Um, now, Ajakuma, um, before we go, where can people reach out to you? Where can they find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram at um, Ajakuma. So that's underscore A G Y A K O M A H underscore. Um, and I'm there on all platforms Facebook, um, Twitter as well. Um, and do not be afraid to hit me up for advice. Um, I'm very keen on like helping people, um, just giving advice in any area I can. Again, I'm very new um, in the music world and like make, figuring out how to make things happen myself. But um, I'm always there to give advice on anything I know. Um, and again, especially to my students in the college. Okay. And where can pick? Where can people pick up Heat? Yes, you can get Heat on all digital platforms: um, Apple Music, Spotify, it's on YouTube, and SoundCloud. Um, and just check that out. There's there's so much more to come. Like I have songs that are just ready to be released, and um, I'm starting this thing for myself where um, I'm trying to drop a new song every month. So this coming April, there's definitely going to be a new song. And from here on out, so I get this project out. God willing, at the end of 2020. Wow. Um... Jakuma, it was a pleasure. I mean, real pleasure speaking to you. You're such an inspiration to um, to everyone. Um, you just have a, a great personality, and um, I like your spirit. Um, I appreciate and I that. think, yeah, I think I think the sky's the limit for you. I really do. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh, before we call it a day here? No, just again, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an honor, and I appreciate you um, sending it out to me. Uh, and just keep a lookout for me. I'm on Instagram, I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and there's gonna be a lot of cool things to come. A lot of collaborations with some Ghanaian artists that people may have not heard of. You know, on the more on these side that I'm starting to do. So it's gonna be a really interesting journey. Well, thank you. Uh, like I said, the pleasure is all mine, and. Um, Keep in touch. Let us know what's going on. I'll follow you um, on all your social media stuff too. So I'll I'll keep abreast on what's going on with you. But again, awesome. I appreciate you taking the time out today to to talk to me. And um, that's Ajakuma on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you again. All right. Absolutely. All right, Thank Jakuma. Uh, that's Jakuma on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'd like to thank my guest today, Ajakuma. You can find out more about Ajakuma on her social media sites as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to join us next week for another edition of the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. Before we end today's show, I'd like to pay tribute to a musical giant. Bill Weathers passed away on March 30th. The writer of classic songs like Ain't No Sunshine, Grandma's Hands, Use Me, Just the Two of Us, Lean On Me, and my personal favorite, Lovely Day. Respected and admired the world over, his music has been covered by Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, Paul McCartney, Sting, Diana Ross, and many others. A three-time Grammy Award winner, 
Withers was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2005 and inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015. His music will live on. Bill Weathers was 81. And we'll see you next week.